Hey guys, it's Ischel Perez. Today we'll be comparing the valence bond theory diagram as well as the crystal field theory diagram. For today's example, I will be using hexamine cobalt 3 ion or CO NH36 3 plus ion. First, let's discern a few things from the complex ion before we build these diagrams. Ammonia is a monodentate ligand, so it will only take one bond space. So with six of these ligands, we can tell that our cobalt ion has a coordination number of six, making the shape an octahedral. Next, we know that ammonia has no charge. Therefore, our three plus is from cobalt. Cobalt three ions are a D6 ion. Finally, ammonia is a strong field ligand. This means that it will cause lone electrons from the central atom to pair when possible. Using this information, let's build our diagrams, starting with the valence bond theory. We'll start with the ground state. I filled in the valence electrons on the left in the 3D orbital. Since ammonia is a strong field ligand, we'll get to add pairing energy and force the electrons to pair. We see this in the excited state. All six electrons have paired up. Now we're ready to hybridize. We'll take six orbitals starting from the left to create a D2 sp3 orbital. Here we can add the six ammonia sigma bonds that will give us our bonded state of CO NH3 6 3 plus. As you can see in the orange, those are where my six NH3 sigma bonds are. Since there are no unpaired electrons, this ion is diamagnetic. We also use D2 sp3, which is an inner D orbital. Inner D orbitals tell us that this ion has a low spin. Next, let's look at the crystal field theory. We'll use the same information we discerned earlier. I'll start with the same 3D orbital. We know that we have an octahedral, so we can create the format for our diagram. Octahedrals are split in two, EG on top, T2G on bottom. EG will have the dx squared y squared orbital and the dz squared orbital. T2g will have the dxy orbital, the dyz orbital, and the dxz orbital. Now we have strong field ligands, remember ammonia? This means we'll have a large crystal field splitting energy, shown on the right. With our diagram set up, we can now fill our electrons from bottom to top. The crystal field splitting energy is larger than our pairing energy. So, our electrons do not have enough energy to go from T2G to EG, so they'll just stay in the T2G. And that's it for the crystal field theory diagram. We can see that there are no unpaired electrons. So our ion is diamagnetic. Plus, the crystal field splitting energy is larger than our pairing energy, making this a low spin ion. So let's compare the two diagrams. Surprisingly, we learned the same thing from both diagrams. Both show that CONH36 is diamagnetic with a low spin. Most importantly, they match in our T2G from the crystal field theory and the 3D from the valence bond theory. Hopefully this helped give a little better understanding of these two theories. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!